Welcome to Concerning the Spiritual in Art, a podcast exploring spirituality, consciousness, and the creative process. I'm your host, Martin Benson. All right, y'all, welcome back to Concerning the Spiritual in Art. I'm Martin Benson, and today I have uh, visual artist Daniel Zeller on the podcast, and we had an incredibly enriching conversation that went to a lot of places. Um, we began the conversation kind of centering around his work and his interest in sort of the macrocosmic and microcosmic scales of perspective um, and sort of how these things are so self-similar. Um, but then we kind of started to move away from not only his work, but sort of things that surround the ideas within his work, thinking about flow states and meditation, deep psychedelic experiences. He told a great story of a psychedelic experience that he had um, when he was younger that really kind of changed his relationship to the natural world um, for good and for the better. Um, then we kind of got into talking a little bit about sort of this cultural moment that we're in and sort of how we're trying to find the wisdom within all the knowledge and the technology that we've developed. Like, how do we cultivate wisdom to implement those things in a way that can help us move forward culturally? So a lot of really enriching conversation that happened. I was really like enlivened by it at the end, just super excited and inspired. And uh, I hope you all will be too. Um, so y'all hope you enjoy the episode. Here's Daniel Zeller. All right, Daniel, welcome to the podcast. How are you doing this morning? Thanks, Martin. I'm well, and yourself? Yeah, doing good. I'm good, super, good. like I was saying earlier in our sort of initial introduction off off record, just super excited to connect with you and to learn more about your work and your process. And one of the things when I when I came across your work that just like blew my mind is how you kind of play with this relationship of micro and macro, like exploring satellite imagery, but yet also like imagery under microscopes and seeing like how these things actually mirror each other in some crazy fractal way. Um, I'm curious sort of like how you got drawn into that as an interest for art making. Um, that's, you know, that's sort of the basis of what I do is, is those, those sources are interesting to me because you know, this, this age we live in, which I, I sort of think of as a, a stage along our evolution, going back to how we evolved and, you know, came out of the ocean and roamed around in the trees for, for millennia. And that's, that's what we're designed to do. Now we have these tools, which allow us to see the great distance into the galaxies and the great distance into what we formerly couldn't see at all. Yeah, which is the basis of life. You know, I remember my first experience with a microscope, looking at a leaf, seeing that there's the structure there of these cells, and there's an organization and a grid and a system of feeding all these cells, and it it mirrors our civilization and how we build roads and feed our our towns and our cities and all that. So, the satellite imagery and the microscopic imagery sort of they're they're almost one and the same in that sense you know they're they're looking at things from distances that we previously couldn't see so you know we've always been looking towards the horizon we've always had a frontier that's unknown and now we have these tools that allow us to know everything i mean i, I spent a lot of time on google earth i i nice. explored the amazon wow the amazon is this vast you know place with these rivers that run through it and they meander along and and it's incredible and it's it's all this detail is there and yet it looks almost uh homogenous from a certain distance you see this just field of green but it's composed of this crazy web of interconnected life and it's all you know it's all connected through the water and anyway i can go on and on and on no yeah i mean to me <laughs> that's such a fascinating uh thing to be able to explore in these modern times like you're saying like our invention of these tools have granted us a perspective that we have never had before. Right. And right. what and what I see that we're finding is like this self-similarity in systems that are mm -hmm. just organically evolved out of right. some magical right. process that we call life. Right. And right. it's just for me, it's like when we look at these images and we see like the fractal relationship between like branches of a tree and then the deep roots or how mm -hmm. rivers meander mm -hmm. from a satellite image to the way that like 
mycelial networks kind of splay out underneath in the soil. Like right. everything is mirroring each other in this magical mm -hmm. way. And I think that as we get into the realm of quantum physics, which like, you know, in the 20th century, 20th century, and I think the 21st century is going to be like a big game changer in that mm -hmm. regard, things just keep getting smaller and vaster and more complex. Right. And yet there's still this simple interconnectedness of it all. I don't know. It blows my mind when yeah. I see it. Yeah. Yeah. No. And it's, it's, you were, you brought up the mycelium and it's, you know, the, the research now is, it's coming to light and, and it's all this, interchange between the, the forest and this network underneath it it's all it, it's a symbiotic relationship that we, we sort of knew was there but now we're really finding out the details of how it works and how important all that is yes and so it's it's pretty incredible time and at the same time we're just destroying all of it no, <laughs> so it's, it's really like at the moment we're learning so much and how things work we're also learning how we're we're dismantling it and how it's going to affect us down the road it's, i know it's it's, a, it's an interesting and, like yeah it's a, it's, a it's an interesting, interesting paradox interesting yeah. yep. Yep. because it's like we have all this knowledge but right. we're lacking wisdom and yep. i think yep. like knowledge is like another tool for us to like understand our relationship mm -hmm. to reality but like wisdom is more of like a deeper sense of like the inner relatedness like you say like interconnectedness of all things like if i right. push a button here it's going to do this there and if i do this mm -hmm. here it's going to do that and so i think we're lacking the humility to to step back a little bit with this hyper intensive technological evolution to be like wait wait what exactly are we doing like we're not really sure we're almost like apes just pushing buttons and be like Whoa. yeah we're still most of us still are i mean you yeah know, we, we we meet our needs and our needs are to get food and to have shelter and to see our loved ones and so we've got these tools now that are available to everybody we yeah. can all travel by car we can all you know go to the supermarket and buy the apples that come from 3000 miles away. And, you know, I do it too. And, and we're yeah. all guilty of it, but it's also, it's a huge problem. How, how are we going to solve these kind of exactly like systems when is... that we've built in order to, to uh, maximize our use of the natural world while we're sort of dismantling it at the same time. So. I know. Well, yeah, the term sustainability is like the big term that's thrown yeah. around. But still, like, I think that there's a lack of really like deep understanding of like what that looks like. And I think we're figuring mm -hmm. it out. I think that's yeah. part of. Yeah, there's there's a lot of positive stuff going on that could solve it. At the same time, we're, you know, I'm, I'm just hoping we're not too late. <laughs> Yeah. I mean, for me, I think that this evolutionary road will continue to march on whether yeah. we're a part of it or not. Right. That's the question. Right. You know, I think like, some of us will get through it. But yeah. I don't know how many. <laughs> I think it, but what's interesting is like becoming, I, as I'm, I'm sure you are as an artist, like becoming more intimate with sort of the, these systems in some way, even if you're just exploring them from like a visual perspective, maybe there's something happening on like a deep cellular level, like within your DNA, like a recognition of this like magical relationship that exists between life. And like, mm -hmm. maybe like, as you explore these forms, you're in some sense, like decoding like your own relationship to it in like a really deep way. And I feel like when I look at your work, I feel that resonance. I feel that intimacy with these forms in some way, because obviously when you look at them, they take so much time and dedication. Mm -hmm. Like you're, you know what I mean? You can't just whip these things up in an hour, you know? Um, can you maybe speak a little bit about your relationship to like your process and like sort of the mentality you bring to the way you create these works? Because they're so vast looking, like the complexity mm -hmm. in mm -hmm. them is just mind blowing. And, and I don't know, I'm just curious. I think people would be interested in understanding sort of the mentality you bring to your own process. Yeah, well, I mean, that's that's the core of what I do is really the process. I mean, it's it's um, the the drawings. I, I like to think that they're built um, in a way. I, I'm um, I come actually out of a sculptural background uh, okay. originally. Well, I, actually, originally I was drawing from the age I could, you know, as early as I can remember. Hmm. So I, I've always had that sort of just 
visual way of just figuring stuff out in, yeah. in a way. And I've always been interested in this kind of uh, map maps and schematic imagery, any way we, we use to sort of plan or represent the world um, outside of photography. I mean, mm -hmm. that's we're we're figuring things out. We're planning where where do we go? How do I communicate that to someone else so that they can go there? Mm -hmm. or they can build this thing that I have an idea for. I mean, yeah. I have a little bit of a drafting background, so there's that. Um, but I think I build the drawings in a way that's, um, I, I, I draw. So I use a point, and you're basically dragging a point along the surface of the paper. Mm -hmm. um, and to me, that it's the most, it's the slowest way to build anything. You can't, like you said, you can't rush that. No. <laughs> and it also allows these sort of subconscious um, processes to sort of not guide the work, but inform the work. I think yeah. you know, th there's a sort of um, getting, it's not a trance, but it's a sort of state where you're a lot of it's automatic. So yeah. I'll have an area that I'm working on and it's these patterns that I'm building. And then you step back and you, you sort of figure out where it's going to go next. And then you step back in and it's it sort of, it's a back and forth like that. Mm -hmm. But it's really important that it's built in a, in that slow way. I mean, I've yeah. tried to work faster. I've tried to use brushes and bigger strokes and things. And it's just, it doesn't have the same, uh, doesn't end up with the same quality. Mm. And I'm not even concerned about how it ends up. I'm concerned with the moment being there and doing, figuring it out as I go and not yeah. knowing where it's going to go. So it's going to be so exciting. It is, and it is, and frustrating right, at <laughs> times because you're like, like "Yeah, how do I bring this thing together?" You know, right? I mean, that's the that's the fun of it. Is it's it ends up being a puzzle. It's like once I've got something going, I'm like, where is it going to go? How am mm -hmm. I going to solve this problem here? And it's all these sort of weird formal things. But yeah. I think um, because the source material is is sort of digested internally and. You know, I had a professor, Jerry Kearns, who who pointed out something to me, uh, which I kind of always knew and most of us know, but you only use like five or 10 percent of your consciousness. Mm. The rest of it is is working, but you don't know it. Yeah. So what's going on in there and how do you tap into that? Wow. And so I, I feel like the way I work is a, is an effort to sort of tap into that. Yeah. And, you know, it's artists. We use the term intuitive and it's. It can be seen as kind of a cop out. It's like you're just moving along, doing whatever. But you know, you really, in order to tap into that, you have to let yourself go to a place that's that allows that to come out. Yeah, and that that's not just uh, stuff in there. It's it's your processing your environment. You're processing mm -hmm. all the information you've ever absorbed. So, yes. you know, that that's. That's kind of so it's kind of like a flow. Would you say you get kind of like it doesn't happen yeah, all the time, yeah. but essentially you get in this flow state where no, like, definitely there's not a hesitation in terms of the action, like it's just pure action right. until right. you, you know, you get to these sort of like probably points where like you have to mm -hmm. go to the bathroom, you have to get a sip of water, you know what I mean? <laughs> yep. Like someone yeah, gives yeah, you yeah. a call, like, but like you probably have these like moments, whether they're like two minutes long or 10 minutes long, or sometimes maybe even longer, where you're just there is no you anymore. There's just right. what's happening. You're, yeah. And I think yeah. those are the yeah. states where like the unconscious processes that like happen start to like release some and they come mm -hmm. through us in some way. Like mm -hmm. they kind of take the reins a little bit. Um, and I think those are, I mean, everyone knows that feeling when you're in that flow state, whether it's through yeah. like athletics, whether it's you're cooking a beautiful meal and you're just totally into the senses of it or again, for us, like making art, like we all, any human can get into that state um, when they concentrate their mind enough, you know? Right. Um, and and so eventually to, you're not even concentrating. You exactly. Don't have to focus on concentrating. You're just, it, you're in there. Yeah. It's just effortless. It's that effortless mm -hmm. like flow that comes through. And I think that's where like, for me, I think wisdom lies is mm -hmm. in those states. It's like, cause like we have within us you know, this vast history of, of experiences encoded in our DNA passed down to us from person to person to person. 
and like deep memories. I, I'm really fascinated with like these new fields in epigenetics where we're thinking mm -hmm. about like even memories or traumatic experiences right, or right. positive ones all encoded in the DNA of our ancestors passed down through us mm -hmm. and, they, and they somehow live in us. So there is this deep wisdom of our own like origins. And so in some sense, when you're working in these flow states, maybe it unlocks some of that stuff. Do you get that a feeling sometime? Do you ever have like big insights like that have nothing to do with like the work you're making, but all of a sudden you're in this flow state and then some something just bubbles up in your consciousness that blows your mind? Does that ever happen? Yeah. To yeah, I think so. I think yeah. so. And the, it's it's usually kind of transitory. It's like, wow. And then, you know, 10 minutes later, it's gone. <laughs> but, yeah. Like but, all yeah, things. I, <laughs> but that also gets reabsorbed into you and you, it's, you know, it's learning. So you, yeah. you, you, you integrate that into what you're doing moving forward. Yeah. So and, yeah. And definitely. compositionally, like, cause I mean, you're, you're moving like, so you're creating these works, you get in these flow states and you're kind of, again, like getting out of your own way and letting the process kind of unfold on its own. But then when you get back in these moments, cause you know, a lot of things that people don't realize about artists is that we're visual problem solvers too. Like we're constantly mm -hmm. having to solve visual problems um, when we, when we notice them, like, is there yeah. in terms of composition or like uh, um, that you're sort of mirroring maybe some like images that you've seen, like, are you taking like directly like source imagery and trying to mimic some of the compositions of maybe some mm -hmm. images you mm -hmm. see, or how do you approach that part of your, your work? So I have done some of that in the past. I've actually, I've used projections and traced out outlines of things, satellite imagery, especially, mm -hmm. and built drawings off of those skeletons. And it, it works best, I think, when the resulting imagery is kind of buried or obscured. Mm -hmm. um, I don't like to be too literal with things. For sure. But uh, it's still, it's a framework to build off of. But for the most part, no, I almost try to do the opposite. I, I try to really obscure things so that the source material is in there, but you don't recognize it. Yeah. You do recognize it and you don't. And that's yeah. the sort of ambiguous place I want the viewer to be in. It's for like, sure. what am I looking at? I recognize yeah. it, but at the same time, I have no idea what it is. So yeah. it's the vocabulary of these sources the topographic maps and the mm -hmm. schematic diagrams and the satellite imagery and the, all that stuff it just gets stirred together and spit back out and those connections are, are sort of built into that process i guess you would wow. say and it, that makes a lot more sense when i look at your work because like mm -hmm. i see you know we're recognizing some of these pattern formations that exist like when you look at like how Again, like even um, if you look at like how fungi like kind of like propagates on top of like a tree bark, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like those little patterns there. Right. That you right. See. But like sometimes, like especially in like the works that you have with the ink on them uh, with color, you'll have these like kind of explosive marks that come out on top of these mm -hmm. patterns in some way, like mm -hmm. disrupting the pattern, creating some like nice visual tension. Right. In there. Right. What yeah, is Yeah, I mean, you're. Mm -hmm. that's and then that's also the fun of it is is working with these patterns and this kind of again that's not trance like state but this repetitive place that you can get into and then the idea is almost to set up these rules and and break them it's yes. like where do i break the rule and what's mm -hmm. going to happen then and that what's that going to teach me about the next place where this happens because now you're just developing a new pattern right exactly so there are patterns overlaid patterns and overlaid patterns and they they combine they integrate they inform each other they pull from each other it's you know every drawing i do it seems like i'm brand i could branch off 10 different directions in the next drawing so wow. it's almost exponential and it's and it, at the same time i'm making the same drawing over and over because right? really it's just a process of mm -hmm. working on paper and not knowing where it's going to go yeah. so it's interesting. It's like this, this principle, I think of like this principle of like creation and destruction and like the, the mm -hmm. harmony between these things. Like if we look at like, again, how let's like look back at like the evolution of our planet itself, it came about through very destructive processes, Indeed. but like, you know what I mean? So like you volcanoes erupting, like it's still going impacts, on, yep. still going on, yep. right? Like the yep. volcano happening, that's a major eruption happening in Hawaii. Like this is how yep. things are formed. You know, I think of a lot of times I'm really interested in like Eastern philosophy. So I think mm -hmm. of like 
the principle of like the the triad in, in Hinduism, you know, where you have mm-hmm. Vishnu, Brahma, and Shiva, you know, creation, preservation, and destruction, and how these right. are these are working together to kind of like create a bigger idea. So again, it's like the micro macro. It's like, yeah, on one level, we look at it, it looks like violent and destructive and crazy. Mm -hmm. But if you zoom out and you see a bigger, let's say a time perspective, because that's where dimension is time. That is the dimension that we tend to miss. We're stuck in our moment. And, you know, if you look back millennia, try to look forward millennia, you see that you're just a blip and what part are you going to play in it? Right. And you see these patterns though, too, these sort of cycles of time Mm -hmm. or these sort of cycles of creation and destruction. Even like when I look at, think about like civilization, right? We're in a pretty fragile moment, I would say. And you look at how civilizations arise and fall, arise and fall, arise and fall. And I think that is part of a bigger sort of experience that's happening outside of like what we can be consciously aware of in the same way, like we have these tools now where we can be aware of the micro and the macro spaces. Like we don't really have those tools necessarily yet to get outside of like the timestamps, you know what I mean? And see those yeah. timestamps other yeah. than like archeology span or looking deep into deep space, but still we're not really understanding what we're looking at, you know? Yeah. I mean, we're starting to starting there's, to, you know, there's plenty of smart people who are figuring it out and, and they're seeing, you know, the, the South American civilizations that rose and fall, they, they deforested their landscape and that was that for them, you yep. know, but yeah. at the moment they were like, look, a tree, we can use that. <laughs> so they didn't have, I guess they didn't, I'm sure some of them had an understanding of how things were integrated, but you know, the civilization had its needs and that's what's happening now. We have our needs and we're understanding what we're doing at the same yeah. time. It's just, we don't have the, uh, the masses don't have the the basic scientific knowledge to understand what the people who do understand are telling them yeah you know what i mean no for sure we have this knowledge but our political system won't let that bubble up to the top where the decisions need to be made so exactly it all becomes like bifurcated in us versus them models right which are just like keeping us separate yeah. and as you We're, know and i know we are we are one we are inner interrelated mm-hmm. interdependent upon each other upon the natural systems and us like right. there's no separation right. between these things but there like isn't any at all and that's yeah. that's what people don't necessarily grasp they yeah they have their needs and they they make their decisions based on fear and if you do that you're making the wrong decision for right. your and for your people that are going to come after you Exactly. Yeah. That's... Fear is a powerful thing. You know, it's like we need to have just enough of it to survive, but like right. it can hijack. It's built, in, it's built into us. You know, yeah, we, it, we do need it. We need it to run away from that tiger. We need to avoid <laughs> that berry that's going to kill us. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. But like, it's just interesting to me because I think you know, we have these systems of understanding the material universe and and these incredible ways through our technology. And, but now we're also moving into a space where we're, we have, I would, I, I would call it sort of a technology, but we're understanding that um, through certain compounds, we can explore inner space mm, yeah. and the psychological levels of consciousness and sort of our inner relationship between the individual consciousness, the collective consciousness and how that plays out through compounds like psychedelic medicine. I mean, on this podcast, we definitely don't always dive down into those spaces, but that's something I'm deeply interested in because mm-hmm. we're living in a quote unquote psychedelic renaissance where we're seeing the the research coming out about how these compounds are really helping lots of people who are right. suffering deeply. And I think what I gather from my own experiences with that and my understanding of the data coming out of these trials is that people come out of those experiences understanding in a deeper, more intuitive level, the interconnectedness of life mm. and yep. they feel more supported and not, and a little mm-hmm. less lonely. Um, right. They feel right. like they can um, step outside their own ego and see a bigger perspective of like where their relationship with the universe is and it, mm-hmm. it makes it mm-hmm. all better for them yeah. and they can live in right. a more functional way. So that to me is a fascinating parallel yeah. to our times is that this kind of 
thing is coming back in a time where I feel like we really need it the most. We've, we've needed it all along. <laughs> it was, it was say that <laughs> For sure. But yeah, I mean, these, these things are, they're certainly, they can be dangerous, but mm-hmm. they're also very, very enlightening. I mean, they, yeah. they open the cliche as they open doors in your mind. And so it, it kind of does that, you know, yeah. I have a little bit of experience with it when I was younger. It's, you know, I'm, I'm by no means an expert in any of this, right? Yeah. I didn't, you know, I didn't go crazy with it, but, uh, but my one experience that I remember the most is after eating mushrooms, um, I somehow ended up, I was with good friends, you know, it was great. Somehow I ended up on my own and I was outside and I lay down on this giant rock. It was nighttime and I, I just sat back and, and somehow I, I, you know, there's, there's a lot of semantics here that I have to be careful with for sure. Cause when you say I became, I became one with the rock. I don't want to say that because that's not what happened. Yeah. I, I was the rock yes. and, and it absorbed me and it was the most comfortable thing I've ever experienced. I was inside the rock and I was wow. completely supported and I merged with it. And so wow. it wasn't me and the rock. It was, I was the rock. And I was staring up at the night sky and the stars and they just, the stars all spread apart and just made this giant hole in the middle, this black hole. And it wasn't frightening. I was like, that's, you know, this is the universe and it's both welcoming and scary, but you know, we have our place in it. Yeah. It's our home. It's nothing to, it's our home. We're here. (laughs) We're part, we're not part of it. We are it. Yes. Like yes. you said, it's the difference between knowledge and wisdom. Yes. It's no, you can read all the books and know that we're part of the environment, but we're not part of it. We are the environment. And that's, yeah. that's the tricky semantic thing that I find with, with politics and how we deal with these issues. Yes. You know, when you, when people talk about environmentalists, they're like, oh, they're trying to save the trees or whatever. No, they're trying to save us. They're trying to save <laughs> the whole integrated part of it and so it's it drives me crazy when these are used as wedges like oh they want to take your jobs because they're trying to save that forest and the loggers aren't happy because they can't cut down the logs you know that's all true yeah but you know we got to start acting like it's not you know us against them it's us for us and exactly. it's all one thing so oh man that's amazing dude i i think i know exactly what you mean especially i think the psychedelic experience is like impossible to really talk about with anybody you can't. who's I mean, never you know, like I, had that right that feeling wash over them and that experience mm-hmm. you know it's like i try to like when i explain it to like i have some friends who are hesitant to mm-hmm. explore it and i i know you know i just know just, you know, you want to be careful with this stuff, like, especially sure. depending on your, your, you know, your health history, mm-hmm. your background, yep. set and setting dosage, all those things are so important. You're playing yes. with, you're playing Russian roulette. If you're just kind yeah. of taking a bunch and going to a party. Now, some people can do that on no judgment, but I think for the most people, we need to be really thoughtful and intentional. Absolutely. Absolutely. But like for me, I was trying to like, dude, it's like, imagine you're, you were born blind and I'm trying to explain to you the color red. Mm-hmm. There's no word, There's no even way. if I'm the greatest poet of all time, <laughs> there yeah. is no word I can use Lang- to equate language to Language doesn't it. work. Yep. It doesn't yeah. work. It falls apart, yeah. you right. know? And so for me, like the, but the experience of you integrating and becoming one with the rock lives with you forever. Like right. it's, it's now yeah. giving you like, um, for me, when I look at psychedelic experience, I think I don't see them as like the ultimate answer. I see them as like a step along the way to help That's us. That's exactly right. That's because exactly right. they, they, for me, they show me like my potential to be one or to love or this potential to transcend gives, my own limitations of the ego. And right. when gives, you have that potential or you feel that potential, you can actually implement it. Right. It gives you an insight into something that you, it was always there, mm-hmm. but now you see it and. And now you can act on it. Now you can work with it consciously without having to be on any compounds, you know, and that's ultimately where the the rubber meets the road. That's the point is like to be able to like take these vast sort of like 
ineffable experiences, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. be able to internalize them, integrate them and um, implement them into the way that you move through the world so that when you interact with another human, you for, you can you can step outside the fact that you're having some argument over who's right and who's wrong. You right. say you look at the bigger we're, picture. And... We're here together <laughs> right. trying to figure yeah. it out. And we are not separate from each other. We are one right. and we are we are of one greater family, you know, which mm -hmm. is mm -hmm. the family of the whole universe. But like yep. that to me is the game changer in this whole binary system of us versus them. Um, and so the question is always in my mind, it's like, can the psychedelics do the kind of work they need to on the scale they need to in order to shift yeah. consciousness? Yeah. Yeah. And that's a big debate in those spaces, you know? Yeah, I'm, I'm skeptical that we'll get there anytime soon. Um, there's a lot of resistance and, you know, some of it's warranted, but well, the um, fear, right? There's so much fear of it. Yeah. We, you know, our culture, we don't, and there's another word, our culture. We don't have a culture. This <laughs> country does not have a culture. We got a gazillion like conflicting and interconnecting ways of looking at the world and everybody, you know, that's the beauty of of independent thinking and mm -hmm. being able to do what you want to do and follow what you want to do. But it also, in terms of how we interact with each other, it means we're all on different pages, Yeah, you know, and to find some commonality is, you know, that's, that's the sticky part. And when we were all living in our little tribes away, away from each other and we had our religions that held those groups together. Yeah. Now we have all these groups trying to vie for, you know, their, allotment of resources or whatever mm -hmm. they feel or defending themselves from some perceived threat whatever yeah. or a real threat yeah so yeah i mean I, I, we've got that experience of knowing the universe as it sort of is but mm -hmm. you know how do you bring that to people and not all of them are going to go down the road of no. psychedelics so how and do nor you, should they you, you know nor should they right yeah. so how do you bring them all? i mean i i've dabbled in some meditation and that's a great way to sort of reach those points I, i've gotten just to the point where i can taste that it's there you yes. know what I mean? <laughs> and i don't have the discipline to keep doing it you know yeah. I, I kind of reach that way through my work in a, in a sense mm -hmm. it's different but but i can see that as a path to get there but Definitely. you know again you're not going to get the masses of people to do that either exactly so, yeah you know. it's interesting you know because it's you, uh, I forget where like this idea comes from, but like these like certain like critical masses, like these tipping points where like you see big cultural shifts mm -hmm. and there's, it's never like you need 90% or 80% right. or hundred percent, but just... it's really like 20 or 30% right. and then the cultural tide shifts. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. for me, that's an interesting concept. I can't recall in my mind right now, like everything about that idea, but like, it makes sense to me because we're all influencing each other all the time sure. in some yeah. way. And we live right. in a time where, you know, through social media and the internet, yeah. like our interrelatedness is more revealed than ever. But also mm -hmm. through that, like to your point, like our separation is more heightened than ever at the same yep. time, which again yep. is these paradoxes that also yeah. fascinate me too. Yep. It's like these conflicts of ideas that seem to make perfect sense together that the rational mind through language can't, can't explain you know mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um i don't know so it's a, it's a, for me like the meditation is definitely like for me that like whether you do psychedelics or not i think meditative practice in some form is so helpful and sort of again sort of calming down and quieting um what they call in neuroscience like the default mode network which is sort of right. what could be like the place of our ego in the physical brain mm -hmm. um these areas where like these patterns of thinking and these sort of um what's the word i'm looking for kind of uh unconscious sort of behavioral tendencies tend to just play themselves out like a like a broken record and we can break we can kind of take the record off the player you right. know through meditative practices and play a new song and yep. that changes yep. people's lives so i think that is definitely going to be a big part of this revolution that we need in consciousness to bring wisdom back into the forefront of all the knowledge and technical um, capacities that we have, you know? Right, right, right. 
yeah, we, we need to get a handle on it. <laughs> for sure. But I think art is also, for me, art is a way, art can serve as a way to like initiate people into greater perspectives as well. Sure. Yeah. Right? I mean, like it can hope, open I doors. I, me yeah. too. Like it's an idealist maybe vision, right. but like I feel it myself. Like when I see, yeah. like, for example, like when I saw your work for the first time, like there's something inside of me that just clicked. I'm like, man, that is amazing. I can see like exactly like this relationship of like pattern and form on macro micro scales. It, I can see myself in that work in some way on some like cellular level. Like, um, I don't know, it resonated with me and it got me feeling that sense of wonder and awe. Um, but also that humility, I think, um, mm -hmm. that you get when you see that, mm -hmm. like, wow, this thing is, this universe is so big and we're right. just this poor little me for just <laughs> a little right. bit of for like a, a pinprick of a time on mm -hmm. the span of a football field, you know, right. like what's, what's, what's really going on here. But I think art can be such an incredible tool for us, just like psychedelic, just like meditative practice, just yeah, like it's part, um, it's part of the continuum. I think so. Yeah. You know, do you feel, do you feel like um, a connection with, any sort of like, can you think like maybe in your past, like any artwork or artists that you came across that just like kind of blew your mind in a way you never expected? Sure. Sure. Um, a number of things. I mean, Chris Burden's work, for example, is, is one of my favorite artists. I remember seeing his Medusa's head. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if you're familiar with that, but it's Vaguely. kind of a big sort of meteor globby shape hanging from a chain and it's just covered in different scales of railroad tracks and wow. model railroads and kind of going through tunnels and surrounding this giant blob <laughs> <laughs> um that that piece blew my mind it was you know it was it's fairly literal his his uh, other vietnam memorial as well was was just a transformative piece for me wow. um wasn't an answer to maya lynn's vietnam memorial it was more of a, a dialogue with it um if you're not familiar with that piece it, i'm not it's, it's uh it's sort of like a giant rolodex almost it's a it has a central pillar and then it has pages kind of outward from it mm -hmm. along that axis and each page has like i think it was three panels of copper wow. with all the names of the vietnamese and i'm not sure if he actually had the actual names or whether sure. he made them up. I, I, I'd have to look into that, but and, you know, there was like 2 million Vietnamese died or something wow. like that. So we had all those names etched, you know, in letters that were like, you know, a centimeter high and, and you, from a distance, it just was a, a, a color. Yeah. You had to get up close to see that there wow. were individual names in it. And, it, and you just see that this vastness of the numbers of names that were there and and they were just like pages that you turn and flipped it was it's that amazing. was incredible to me yeah because yeah, it yeah. shows you like it gives you a sense of perspective of like how right. big like how big exactly because like we i think that's a big issue we have too is like it's easier to help an individual like if i hear so and so mm -hmm. down the street is has no food in their fridge i'm immediately going to be like let's bring right. food but if i hear right but 20,000 people don't have any yeah, food. Like it's beyond your capacity to do anything. So I don't really understand that number. And so like a mm -hmm, sculpture like mm -hmm. that, a work like that is really fascinating to kind of use visual form and space to illustrate like the vastness of like right. what was really lost. Yes. Cause that, we that abstract was, I mean, these that, things in our mind. Yep, right. And so it just, it hits you like a hammer and yeah, and it, it works. So Yeah. But well, that's interesting because it, it doesn't really, it's not like related to your art directly, but in some way it is in terms of perspective shifting, right? Mm -hmm. Like yeah. seeing time yeah, exactly. scales and space exactly. scales in yep. a new, in a new way, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's something that art can really do for people is shift their perspective in the way that they see themselves in relationship to whatever yes. idea it is that that artist is exploring. And mm -hmm. To me, mm -hmm. like we we value it, but not really in a way that I think because art has now become more about like entertainment when we think of yeah, the arts, it's, it's you a, know, come it's it's you know it's it occupies these two places. Yes, the, the place where you want it to be, where it's enlightening and informative, and reaches people, and it's also there's a marketplace mm -hmm. of, of objects. Yeah, um, and there's a there 
inevitably there's a, a an interplay there and, a, and there can be conflict and there can be you know but getting the work out to people you know what is it five percent of this country looks at art right what are you going to do with the other 95 percent? you know it, it certainly it influences things that eventually reach yeah those people so it's not it's not without that value but it's you know it, you're it's a pretty limited audience directly definitely um, but i think in a time where like we are so obsessed with material and mm-hmm. buying and selling and commodification of everything like that we've lost the sense of like appreciation and value for like where these things come from. For example, like our phones, like if we really knew the reality of what it took (laughs) to bring our phone to get all the, even just the raw materials and then to manipulate those materials and then put them together. Mm -hmm. And then, and then all the software the hardware, everything to be in our, like we take all that so much for granted, you know? So for me, like art in itself is really interesting because there's only, potentially depending on you know what kind of work you make i do like there's just one of these things that exist you know like we can make copies and sell prints or we can do right. like editions and things but so to me that's always an interesting thing as well yeah you yeah know? it's the product of uh, of a singular focus on something yeah without without uh needing a, a system to support it yeah yeah we're I mean, just that's, obsessed that's not with even this. entirely true because because i need paper which was made Mm -hmm. in a mill and i need my pens which were made in a factory and you know sure i could take a piece of charcoal and scratch on a on a cave wall too but yeah that's That's not where we're at you know (laughs) but i'm i'm reflecting what i see around me which is you know these these systems which are now really visible so Yeah. yeah yeah i don't know i just think that like art has a big role to play and but like i think we're obsessed with when I, when I said like entertainment earlier, like, you know, the time mm-hmm. that we spend looking at images is really through scrolling it's, or yep. Netflix or, you know, which yeah. are cool. Like I love TV, like I'll watch movies and stuff, but like, uh-huh. we're so oversaturated with yeah. images yeah. Um, yeah. that like it really losing a sense of value of the, from Yeah, them. no, then that's exactly right. And it goes back to what I, how I started this with how we evolved by needing to, take care of our basic needs and mm-hmm. and we didn't have screens throughout our evolution so no. we're not equipped to deal with this no at all. it's it's this a, is a total... barrage it's a barrage of stuff coming at you and you have to filter it and you have to figure out what's important and yeah. a lot of it is really seductive and it'll grab you and now your your two hours of that day is gone yeah you know exactly. what did you get out of it you were entertained but where are you now? Exactly. So this is this is a crazy time for that because we're all dealing with it, and I'm watching my son deal with it. Mm-hmm. He's, Me you know, too. he's finally got a smartphone. How old? You have a, a four-year-old. So you have four. a four-year-old. Yeah. Oh yeah, <laughs> mine is almost twelve. And, wow. You know, he just got his phone that he needs because yeah. he goes to school on his own, and it's. But yeah. this thing, he can't get enough of it i know games on it and you look stuff up and it's an incredible wealth of information every now and then he's looking something up and i'm like that's cool he found something out yeah and then i look at him and he's absorbed in this mindless game i'm like ah, it's just killing his brain what you know what's going on here i know and it's you know for you know i have a hard time with it you me know, too. I man. hate the thing. It's like I pick <laughs> it up because it's there, and I was like, "Let's see if there's a new article on the New York Times." I want to, you know, yeah. And it's just constant, and I find myself just like I can't deal with this thing. I have to put it away, and yeah. And then five minutes later, I'll pick it up again. I know, and you're not even aware it's, you're picking it up. It's right, like right. it's really like it's really interesting because, like, you know, we have like some of the most brilliant minds in psychology and neuroscience mm-hmm. and computer science all working together, you to know, make it, to make it the most active, want. addictive thing ever. So right. we are fighting against, you know, yeah. a real yeah. hard uphill battle. That's why I think like the, uh, like going to a museum or a gallery or like an yeah. installation yeah. or a sculpture garden, like it slows you down. Exactly. Um, exactly. And it makes you become aware of like nuance and subtlety because mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. we, our attention spans are so shortened. Like if we don't yeah. get captured in like a millisecond, we're on mm-hmm. to the next thing on the scroll feed yeah and that's, and so, that's like, really that's that's i i find that to be really 
that's that's key right now yeah. i think how do we how slow do you, yeah you know, slow the mind so people down. can think and process the information they need to in order to make decisions they need to make exactly like we don't have enough processing time like yeah our right. brains are incredible like the greatest processor there is and mm -hmm. still we've but created you're, you're, some system that's overwhelmed it sure because your your brain has to deal with its input if you're mm -hmm. inputting all this stuff you have to filter it you have to yeah. figure out what's important and, exactly. and without a without again without a base education and knowing how things work i mean the the debate about science and global warming is is nuts. There's, yeah. There isn't a debate anymore. And yet <laughs> half of our political system is like just either ignorant or willfully ignorant or doesn't want to admit it or whatever, or just doesn't know the basics enough to understand what's happening. Because yeah. you have to really understand how physics works. How yeah. does how does the atmosphere warm? And it's not that complicated, really. No, I know. Carbon, if there's carbon in the atmosphere, the sun heats it up and that sun, that energy doesn't get reflected back to space. So now yeah. your atmosphere is warming. And guess yeah. what? That goes into the ocean and the ocean is warming. So you get integrated systems, right? Like yeah, exactly, it's, exactly. You know, and yeah. so people need that basis of knowledge in order to be able to process the information that's coming at them. Definitely. Otherwise, they're like, ah, they're scientists. They're trying to manipulate me. Right. That's, I know. You know, again, we're not back to Not everybody's out to get them. you. Yeah, right. not everybody's out to get you. There's this mass paranoia that I think mm -hmm. is um, definitely overwhelmed a lot of our, our uh, let's look at just America because, you know, that's where, I, where we live and yes. what we're seeing every day. But like, there's paranoia, but it's on both sides. It's like paranoia sure, against sure. like the status quo, mm -hmm. against these power systems and political class and the wealthy elites. But there's also paranoia against people who think differently or look differently. It's like we need we need to dismantle a lot of the fear, you know, that's yep. happening. And, you know, I, I don't know what the answers are, but I think what's interesting for me and what I think about personally is that. I feel all the solutions are here right mm -hmm. now at our fingertips sure. to to, sure. to fix these problems and to move toward a greater harmony and symbiosis mm -hmm. on a cultural societal level that again, mm -hmm. reflecting the symbiosis and harmony within nature, within our own consciousness. I think all the tools, the technologies are all there. We're lacking the wisdom to implement them. And I think that's what we need more than ever is yeah. that. Yeah. And, um, I'm not sure where it's going to come from necessarily, you know, but um, I think one thing that we can do as individuals is try to cultivate that wisdom in ourselves, And sure. in some way that that's can the, be a part of the, the system, you know? Yeah. It's, it's the, it's the bare minimum of what we can do, yes, you know, and, at the very and I, least. That's, that's, that's what I do. I, yeah. I'm not the best at, you know, proselytizing or getting the word out to other people. I try to do it through my work and I try to, and you responded to it in a way that I hope people yeah. do. You, it, it, it absorbed you. You, you definitely, you were moved by it. And because there's a connection between what you see that I've done, the, the, you know, or any artist does, you, yeah. you see that process, you see within that person, you see something, you make a connection with the person, not not just the artwork. Yeah, you know the artwork is a it's a language that's communicating mm -hmm. non verbally, and, yep. it, and it gives you an insight into somebody's world. Yeah, it's a different way <laughs> of if, understanding. You know. Yeah, 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 yeah. Language. You know, you may you may have noticed I'm not I'm not great with language. I, the words are in there and they come <laughs> out, and sometimes it's a mess. But you know. But it, again, it's it's sort of the semantics of it. You know, I keep going back to the word environmentalism. You know, right. we aren't we aren't we aren't connecting that way. Yeah. We're we're actually creating a separation when we when we yeah. say the word the environment, we're saying, okay, we're here and the environment is there. Exactly. And that's an untruth. And exactly. so it's, it's built not the case. into our language. And that's true of so many. I wish I could, you know, there's thousands of examples like that. Oh, yeah. Infinite. Where the language is is built because we need a way to interpret the world and communicate the world. But it's by doing that, we've separated things and we've built, totally. put up walls between things. And so totally. how do you break those down? I mean, it's, we I have like to, to think. 
I like to think I'm doing it a little in my little way by for making sure. these drawings, but you know, it's it's a small thing. And but we all play a small. We like we said, we're a pin prick on the football mm-hmm. field of time. You know, like right, right. We right. Uh, but we all but every part matters, right? Like if mm-hmm. you look at like these systems, like if one part of that system broke down, then the whole thing kind of loses its symbiosis. Like everything right. is in, it's right. such a delicate balance. Mm-hmm. But I think mm-hmm. you're so right. Like language is the limiting factor because we, because a lot of times you're having, let's say a debate with somebody, we're not agreeing on what these terms mean. So like my idea of what this term means and your idea of this term means is not the Mm -hmm. same. So when we're talking about it, you're you're just hitting about two different things. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Are you familiar with um, Alan Watts? Do you know Alan Watts? You Uh, would love this guy. He was like from the sixties and seventies. Like that's where he was like doing most of his teaching he mm-hmm. kind of like bridge. He's a British philosopher. Um, you can, oh my God, you're going to love this guy. He talk about, I, someone, I know the name and I've yeah. probably read something, but I'll, for I'll sure. You'll, yeah, yeah. It'll blow your mind. And cause like there are some people that can use language in a way that breaks mm-hmm. language, you right, know? Right. And, yeah, yeah, um, and yeah. he's definitely one of them, probably one of the most skillful um, mm-hmm. speakers and writers um, in that way, at least mm-hmm. from my perspective. Um, but I, I feel like you would love the way he used language. He basically, um, he was like an Anglican priest in Britain for a long time. And then he started discovered Eastern philosophy and psychedelics in the Mm sixties. And he became Mm -hmm. like this incredible sort of interpreter and exponent of integrating Eastern philosophy with Western philosophy and psychedelic culture. And you can find a million of his lectures (laughs) on YouTube and online, like, um, the book that uh, really I loved the most that kind of the first one I read was the uh, wisdom of insecurity. So if y'all, y'all out there, if you ever have never read Alan Watts, it's, it's a must. Um, but he uses language in a way that breaks language and, mm-hmm. and reveals to you the limitate limiting factors of what language is. Um, right. But I think the point at the end of the day, circling back to, you know, the story you told us, like, we have to remember that, like, the, we are the rock. The rock and us right. are one, you know? Yeah. yeah and yeah. there is no us and them. There is no environment mm-hmm. in us. Like it is an integrated system. Mm-hmm. And it's, I think, and I think your work as an artist is not only exploring this, but also expressing this reality of these integrated systems in a way that, again, we're understanding them non-verbally. And that's a, an, an equally an important way to understand mm-hmm. anything Mm -hmm. um as language is you know we give language like as being the pinnacle of how we communicate but yeah it's not in my opinion i think it's one it's one way and we can't live without it for sure sure. there's a visual language to another another piece you know that you had asked me you know which which artists i i responded to and and uh i remember seeing um in the geology department of, of of the university of massachusetts where i went to graduate school um uh, uh, probably a say ten geologic chart that used different colors to to delineate different uh, geologic formations or, mm-hmm. or however you know I couldn't I couldn't read it yeah but it was this amazing like just tapestry of representation of someone's understanding of this part of the world wow and so you, you know and topographic maps are another thing you know when I when I was a kid I had the for you know the geologic survey they do this mm-hmm. maps and they come in these quadrants and uh and where i grew up outside of new haven was in the corner of one so i was able to put four of them together wow. and uh, so i had this big map on my wall and those they're just packed with detail mm-hmm. and there it's all the all, all the stuff is there it's the elevation mm-hmm. the infrastructure that people have made where the water is where it's forested and so these these systems that we've developed in order to talk about the world in a nonverbal way it, there's just so much there yes and so you lay that over a, uh you know a schematic diagram of a you know of a some piece of audio equipment or something that some <laughs> team had to design and now you know you've got these different things and they, they seem unrelated but but they're just different ways that we've figured out how to communicate visually Yes. And so those are the things that I find sort of drive 
this ridiculous thing that I do. I mean, what I'm doing is absurd. I mean, and that's <laughs> kind of what I love about it is yeah. the absurdity of like integrating all these things into a thing that isn't any of them. Wow. It's um, amazing. And, and you know, that's for me, that's, it's, a, it's in a way a very selfish act, you know, cause I'm, I'm kind of looking inwards and doing my thing and, mm. and, and, and digesting this information that I'm, I've absorbed. But I, I think that also gets a, a bad rap. For sure. I've been, I've been sort of accused of navel gazing and that, that's not completely wrong, but it's also, it is wrong because you're not looking at your own navel. You're, you're integrating all this information that you've, mm. that you've absorbed through your life. For sure. And, and the, the information that I find most fascinating is how we communicate with each other yeah. visually. Yes. You know, whether it's a, you know, an electron micrograph, which is illuminating some structure that's so small that you'll never see it, yep. but there it is. Now we yeah. can. So yeah. it exists and this is we, how it we exists. just, yeah. And we yeah. just know as a, as a, as a mass of humanity, we know so much yeah. and yet none of us can know all of that. Nope. So yeah, exactly. So how do we find what's important and how to how to weed through it? And yeah. so I'm almost doing the opposite. I'm like taking all of that and making something that is isn't any of it. What's <laughs> it's just kind of ridiculous. I love though, but that the absurdity or the ridiculousness that it might sound in one perspective is what makes it amazing to me because that is what makes the human species so incredible in my mind is like that we're drawn to do things like this, you know, like mm -hmm. um, that's what, if there was any sort of separating system, that's what sort of helped. That's what kind of elevates the human consciousness from, or separates it from other types of consciousness is that creative um, exploration and something that has no intrinsic survival value necessarily, mm -hmm. or at least on, on a practical level. But I think on some, cosmic consciousness level it is a part of our survival because we're trying to not only express our experiences but to reach out and communicate with others and create a shared um relationship yeah. and in right, a way right. that is more akin to how we actually are related you know what mm -hmm. i mean so yeah, art, yeah art for me that's what art does and artists do yeah you yep. know yep if someone accuses you uh, of being of that being navel gazing or selfish, then they <laughs> then they fully haven't understood what the self is or what you know right, what I mean right. because like what you're reflecting is what's a part of everyone and everything, and you're just exactly. a portal for that information to filter through your consciousness as this mm -hmm. individual expression of Daniel. But mm -hmm. like you know that that's a limiting thing, and that you're yeah, a part of yeah. something bigger, you know, that's expressing itself. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. so, but you know, people can have their opinions. I have mine, you have yours, like that's yeah, part of life. That's, and that's exactly right. I, I pray it never, it. I pray it never <laughs> stops you from making what you're making and, and continue to no, push no. the boundaries of what you Absolutely. explore. Cause, yeah, uh, to yeah. me, that's in a world like the one we've been describing a little bit today, I see things like what you're doing as being incredibly even more valuable than ever. Um, because it's at least pointing toward a way of living that is, um, counter to this sort of numbing cultural mm -hmm, sort mm -hmm. of system that we've created around materialist, consumerist, capitalist ideologies, you know, right, right. Um, where it's always about, um, what is it? Infinite growth in a finite system. Yeah, what, is, what, exactly. an, what a dumb thing. <laughs> that doesn't make a lot of sense. <laughs> Not at all. <laughs> well, I really appreciate you, you know, taking the time to talk with me. This has been an awesome conversation. I feel oh, good, like we, good, we yeah, went and, so and, many awesome places and uh, yeah, I definitely learned a lot and took a lot from it. And um, I'm really grateful to you and, and the work that you're making and uh, taking the time to to speak with me um, about it and just to hear your thoughts. I think it's um, it's really incredible. So y'all in the show notes, I'm going to have uh, links to Daniel's work, his Instagram, um, and of course, Daniel, is there anything that comes up um, that you're doing any shows or anything that you want me to draw people's attention to? I'll be in touch with you um, about that so we can make sure to let people know. So very good. Awesome. Yeah, thank you. I, I enjoyed the conversation as well. It was, yeah. it was fun. It's a lot and, uh, of fun, right? That's what we're here to yeah. do. Have fun and yeah, just yeah. exchange minds a little bit. And I think we, we yep. accomplished that today. So yeah, kudos to us. <laughs> yeah, right on. Remember, y'all, you are the rock. Okay, <laughs> there's no separation. All right, All right, take care, Daniel. Peace <laughs> you too. Thanks, Martin. Yeah.
Thank you all so much for tuning into this episode of Concerning the Spiritual and Art. If you like what we're doing here, go ahead and hit that subscribe button so you can stay in touch and in tune with all the amazing offerings that we're going to be uh, bringing to this channel. Um, Thanks again for all your support. Super grateful and uh, yeah, excited to uh, bring more content your way. Peace, y'all.